Gregor the Overlander, Chapter 17 Prisoners, exclaimed Gregor, are you at war with the spiders too? Oh no, said Merith, we are on peaceful terms with the spinners. We trade with them, we do not invade each other's lands. But it would be an exaggeration to call them our friends. I'll say, said Gregor, so did everybody know they would lock us up except me? He had trouble keeping the irritation out of his voice. He was getting tired of finding out about things after the fact. I am sorry, Gregor, said Vicus. I have worked long to build bridges between ourselves and the spinners. I thought perhaps they would be more agreeable, but I overestimated my influence with them. He looked weary and old. Gregor hadn't meant to make him feel worse than he already did. No, they really respect you. I mean, I think they were going to eat me until I mentioned your name. Vicus brightened a little. Truly? Well, that is something. Where there is life, there is hope. That's so weird. That's what my grandma always says, said Gregor. He laughed, and somehow that broke the tension. Kiko, fish, de poor, said Boots crankily. She tugged at her pants. Yes, Boots, fresh diaper, said Gregor. She hadn't been changed for ages. He dug through the pack Dulcet had given him and realized he was down to two diapers. Uh-oh, he said. I'm almost out of catch class. Well, you could be, could not be in a better place. The spinners weave all our catch cloths, said Solovet. How come they're not sticky, asked Gregor, touching his face. Spinners can make six different kinds of silk. Some sticky, some soft as boots skin. They make our garments as well. Really, said Gregor? Do you think they'd let us have more catch cloths, even if we're prisoners? I doubt it not. It is not the spider's goal to antagonize us, said Solovet, only to hold us until they can determine what to do. She called up to a guard, and in a few minutes, two dozen diapers came down on a thread. The spider also sent down three woven baskets filled with clean water. Solovet began to work her way around the group, cleaning wounds and patching people up. Luxa, Henry, and Merith paid close attention, as if she were teaching a class. Gregor realized the ability to heal battle wounds was probably important if you lived down here. Solovet began by cleaning the gash on Merth's thigh and stitching it up with a needle and thread. Gregor winced on Merth's behalf, but the guard's face was pale and set. Two bats required stitches on torn wings, and though they made a great effort to remain still while Solovet slid the needle in and out of their skin, the process was clearly agonizing for them. Once all the obvious bleeding had been stopped, Solovet turned to Gregor. Let us attend to your face now. Gregor touched his cheek and found that welts had formed where the webs had ripped off. Solovet soaked a catch cloth in water and placed it on his face. Gregor had to grit his teeth to keep from screaming. I know it burns, said Solovet, but you must wash the glue from your skin or it will fester. Fester, said Gregor. That sounded awful. If you could stand to splash water upon your face, it would be more painful but faster process, said Solovet. Gregor took a deep breath and dunked his whole head into one of the baskets. Ah! He screamed silently and came up gasping. After five or six dunks, the pain faded. Solovet nodded approvingly and gave him a small clay pot of ointment to dab on his face. While he gingerly applied the medicine, she cleaned and bound a series of smaller wounds and forced an uncooperative vicus to let her wrap his wrist. Finally, she turned to Temp and Tick. Crawlers, need you any assistance from me? Boots pointed out a bent antenna on one of the roaches. Temp, boo-boo, she said. No, princess, we heal ourselves, said Temp. Gregor was sorry Temp was injured, but on the plus side, he could now tell the roaches apart. Bandage, insisted Boots, and reached out to grab the crooked antenna. No, Boots, said Gregor, blocking her hand. No bandage on Temp. Bandage, Boots gave Gregor a scowl and pushed him away. Oh, great, thought Gregor. Here we go. In general, Boots was a very good-natured two-year-old, but she was still two, and every so often she would throw a tantrum that left the rest of the family exhausted. Usually it happened when she was tired and hungry. Gregor dug in the pack. Hadn't Dulcet said something about treats? He pulled out a cookie. Cookie boots? She reluctantly took the cookie and sat down to gnaw on it. Maybe he had headed off the worst. 
Hates us, the princess hates us? Asked Tick worriedly. Oh no, said Gregor. She just gets like this sometimes. My mom calls it the terrible twos. Sometimes she throws a fit for no reason. Boots scowled at everybody and drummed her feet on the ground. Hates us, the princess hates us, murmured Temp sadly. Baby Roaches probably didn't have tantrums. No, really, she still thinks you're great, promised Gregor. Just give her some space. He hoped the Roaches wouldn't get so hurt by Boots' behavior that they'd want to go home, not that anyone was going anywhere right now. Vicus gestured him over to where the others had gathered. He spoke in a whisper. Gregor, my wife fears the spinners may pass on our whereabouts to the rats. She advises that we escape with all speed. I'm good with that, said Gregor, but how? Boots came up behind him and gave his arm a pinch for no reason. No, Boots, he said, no pinching. More cookie, she said, tugging on him. No, not for pinchers. Cookies are not for pinchers, said Gregor firmly. Her lower lip began to tremble. She marched away from him, plunked herself down on the floor, and began to kick at the pack. Okay, sorry, what? What's the plan, said Gregor, turning back to the group. Can we just cut our way through the web and run? No, outside this funnel web are scores of spinners ready to repair a hole and attack with poison fang. If we flee upward, they will leap on us from above, whispered, whispered Solovet. What's that leave, said Gregor. Only one resort. We must damage the web so fully and so rapidly they cannot repair it, nor will it hold their weight, said Solovet. She paused. Someone must perform the coiler. Everyone looked at Luxa, so Gregor looked at her too. Her golden bat, which stood behind her, dipped its head down and touched her neck. We can do it, said Luxa softly. We do not insist, insist Luxa. The danger, particularly at the top, is very great. But in truth, you are our best hope, said Vicus unhappily. Henry put his arm around her shoulder. They can do it. I have seen them in training. They have both speed and accuracy. Luxa nodded resolutely. We can do it. Let us not wait. Gregor, ride you on Vicus's bat. Vicus, with me, Henry, and Merith, take one crawler each, said Solovet. We need a distraction to cover Luxa, said Merith. I could go through the side. Not with that leg, said Solovet, her eyes flashing around, and no one goes through the side. It is certain death. The spinners are very sensitive to noise, said Vicus. It is too bad we have no horns. Gregor felt a pair of feet drumming angrily into his legs. He turned around and saw Boots on the floor kicking him. Cut it out, he snapped at her. Do you need a time out? No time out, you time out, you time out. Cookie, cookie, sputtered Boots. She was about to blow any minute. You need a noise, said Gregor in frustration. I've got a noise for you. He picked Boots up and wrestled her into the backpack. No, 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 said Boots, her voice rising in pitch and intensity. Everybody ready, asked Gregor, pulling a cookie from Dulcet's bag. The underlanders weren't exactly sure what he was doing, but in seconds they were prepared to take off. Solovet gave him a nod. We are ready. Gregor held up the cookie. Hey, Boots, said Gregor, want a cookie? No, cookie, no, cookie, no, 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 said Boots, way past the point of being pacified. Okay, said Gregor, then I'll eat it. And making sure he could see, he stuck the whole cookie in his mouth. Mine, screamed Boots, mine, mine, mine. It was an eardrum piercing shriek that rattled his brain. Go, you, Luxa, cried Solovet, and the girl took off on her bat. Now Gregor could understand why the, co why the coiler was such a big deal. Luxa was rising up along the web, spinning and twisting at a dizzying rate. She held her sword out straight above her head. It was slicing the funnel to shreds. <clears throat> Only an extraordinary and flexible rider could have pulled off a move like that. Wow, said Gregor. He jumped on Vicus's big gray bat. Mine, screeched Boots, mine. Above him, he could see Luca spinning and slicing. The other underlanders were following, following her, cutting straight up the sides of the funnel web. Gregor brought up the rear with boots and her blinding screams. At the top of the funnel, the golden bat hung in space, performing an intricate upside-down figure eight. Under the protection of Luxa's flashing sword, the underlanders zipped out to freedom. 
Gregor was the only one still in the funnel when it happened. From above, a jet of silk shot down, encircling Luxa's sword arm and jerking her from her bat. The pair of striped legs reeled her in like a fish.